G'day guys, Tony from GME. We're doing something a little different today. We're gonna to run you through some installation tips for those of you who want to install your own UHF radio and antenna in your vehicle to ensure that you avoid some of the common mistakes that are made with a DIY install. So you've decided that you want to do your own install of your UHF antenna and your radio in your vehicle. There's a couple of really important things that you should note, and that starts with the placement of your antenna. So as you can see on my vehicle here, I'm actually running two antennas. On the driver's side, I've got a UHF antenna, and on the passenger side, I've got a cellular antenna. It's really important that you make sure you've got adequate separation between your antennas. We recommend a minimum of 300 millimeters, but the further apart the antennas are, the better it will be and the less likelihood of interference. So the next thing you've got to consider is the path that the coax cable is going to take from the antenna base through the engine bay, through the firewall and into your vehicle where the radio is mounted. And the most important thing to remember here is that you don't damage the cable when you're running it. So no kinks, no bends, and make sure the cable's not gonna get pinched by anything in the engine bay or even the bonnet when you close it to ensure that that cable remains untouched and is gonna give you optimum performance. So the last thing to keep in mind when you're running the coax cable for your antenna is that you keep it as far away as possible from any power leads for other accessories you may have on your vehicle particularly things such as LED light bars, as these can introduce huge amounts of interference to your system and you may think that you have a problem with your radio. So that's pretty much it for the antenna. All GME antennas are pre-terminated with an FME connector, which means there's no soldering, there's no crimping. So once you've chosen your location, you've run the cable and you've secured the antenna base to the vehicle, it's time to step inside and choose your location for mounting your radio. Okay, so now you've got your antenna mounted, your cable's routed through the firewall. The next step is to select where you're going to mount the main radio unit. Now, in my case, I'm running an XRS330 in this old girl, so I've got plenty of space to choose from in terms of locations, so my radio's mounted up under the dash. In a lot of new vehicles, though, you struggle for space. So think about locations such as behind the kick panel, in the glove box, or even alongside the transmission tunnel beside your seat. So in the case of the XRS range, they're what we call hideaway units, which means you don't need to be able to access the main radio to control it. All the controls and the screen are on the microphone itself. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of where you're going to mount the radio. The other beauty of a hideaway unit is we offer a range of extension cables and pass-through adapters, which means you can mount the main radio unit some distance away from the microphone. Use that extension lead and the pass-through adapter to connect your microphone. We offer a range of vehicle-specific pass-through adapters that fit factory switch blanks, but in the XRS 330 and 370, we supply a generic pass-through adapter, which will suit the majority of applications. So the next thing you need to decide is how you want to power the radio. And you've got two options. You can pick up accessory power from one of your other accessories within the cabin so that the radio only comes on when the ignition's on, or alternatively, you can run permanent power direct to the car's battery. And this has some benefits. For example, if you're in camp, you're waiting on some people and you wanna be able to hear them on the radio, you can have your vehicle powered off and the radio will still be on. These radios draw less than half an amp on standby, so you don't need to worry too much about the radio running your battery down. But again, it's personal preference how you choose to wire the radio in. So the final piece of the puzzle is deciding where you're gonna mount your microphone. Think about this very carefully because you want to ensure that it's convenient and that you'll be able to reach your microphone while you're driving the vehicle without creating any kind of hazard. We often see people mounting the microphone in the passenger side footwell and it's not the best location unless of course you like your passenger to have control of your UHF. And the last thing to keep in mind when mounting the microphone is if it's a speaker mic, you would like to have the speaker facing you so that you don't need to be running maximum volume on the radio in order to hear the transmissions that you receive. Now in my case, I actually didn't have room on my dash to mount my microphone with the speaker facing towards me. But as the XRS has got a two watt speaker in the handpiece, having the microphone mounted on the center console in my car is still a good solution. 
and I've got plenty of audio, so I'm only running at about 50% of the max volume. I've also converted the mounting bollard on my microphone from the standard hang-up style to a magnetic version, which means the mounting clip doesn't have to be on a vertical surface. So really that's it. Installing a UHF and antenna in your vehicle is a super simple process, and if you follow these simple tips that we've provided, you'll ensure you get the best performance out of your radio for many years to come.